Welcome back, you Sigma male, Zoomer, Millennial, Boomer, Iron Pilled people out there who are watching this video. Over here, I want to show off my water distiller. It's been to my left this entire time through all these previous videos, but you can probably hear it, or maybe you heard it in, in the previous videos, but I'm drinking distilled water which is better than the tap water because there's so many xenoestrogens in the tap water. So I probably get about, I don't know, fills most of that pot up in maybe four or five hours. And you can see right here, uh, right there, that's a timer set onto a plug strip. So I set that timer to four and a half hours five hours and I get a load of water out of there and then I then I transfer that water into glass jugs but I think I'm probably going to switch over to a re reverse osmosis system afterwards because I figured out there's this guy on YouTube called Lauren Lockman and it makes a lot of sense that there is no purely distilled water in nature like most water has some degree of chemicals or not chemicals, minerals, even rainwater. No, ma no matter where you go in the world, you can't find just purely distilled water. And we do need those minerals. So that's why I think I will eventually sell this or maybe keep it and then switch to a re reverse osmosis system. So if you guys have any recommendations about what brand I should get, let me know. Today, I want to talk though about being an ethnic traditionalist and how in Fatima they talked about how the final battle between God and Satan will be over the family and the family unit is also it's definitely Catholic values but it's also ethnic values to some degree you can't discount your ethnic background I'm mixed race I'm half Filipino and half Irish German so I've been kind of like thinking about this a lot myself, whether or not which kind of identity to identify with. And in America, you know, there is no unified like ethnic traditions. A lot of that just goes away within one or two generations. And we're all just like gray paste where if you, if you just move a bunch of different colors together and you mix them up, it's just like gray, brown, you know, we're all the same. We, we have zero ethnicity, zero culture. Some culture is good, some culture is bad, no doubt. But I think that we need to be more in touch with our roots, more in touch with where we came from. And those kinds of things, those narratives, those stories, those traditions, that's what keeps family strong. When you don't have that, then your family is more likely to erode. You know, my Filipino family, they're all big into family traditions. And you take it for granted, you know. I live in America. And one thing I realized recently is that if I don't learn how to make the lumpia, if I don't learn how, like, all these traditions that I've taken for granted for my Lolo and Lola, it's all just going to go away. And then, you know, my kids are never going to benefit from that. So I think knowing your family history, knowing your family foods and recipes, knowing your, your family and ethnic background gives your family more strength than just being uh, purely Americanized because the family is definitely under attack and it makes sense to create bulwarks against that erosion of the family where we can and a lot of that is in the ethnic traditions. The Filipinos, they're very family oriented. And, you know, I can see even in myself and other people in my family, it's easy to become Americanized. But I think that it's good to become in touch with your ethnic roots. That doesn't mean that other people's backgrounds are bad. It's just It just means that you value your own, where you're from, your family history. Right now I am trying to construct a family tree. I've been interviewing my Lolo and Lola 
trying to get the names of the family members in the past and trying to get the history because they are they probably don't have too much time left and i don't think i would regret you know spending time with my grandparents so please i'd recommend if you if you're not spending time with your grandparents please spend time with your grandparents especially if they have some sort of ethnic background and they're uh they have you can learn a lot you know and that that teaches you about yourself and you can pass it on being a conservative means that you conserve so any any kind of family history any kind of stories i think that's all good stuff we should be trying to preserve that that gives you an identity and that doesn't mean that you like i'm i'm an american and i'm also a filipino and so i don't see why those two like you have to only be an american or only be a filipino but yes i think that being a traditionalist partially means being trad in terms of you know going to the line mass or being orthodox but it also means preserving your own ethnic traditions and it can be tough you know if you come from a background where a lot of information has been lost you can only go so far but there may be people within your extended family who have done some of that legwork and who have kind of uh captured a lot of that kind of uh, family story. You know, I know that a lot of the European countries, they identified with the Christian tradition and they, there's the table of nations in, in Genesis. And it's like, this guy begat this guy and this guy begat this guy and this guy begat this guy. And, you know, a lot of like the European countries, they connect themselves into that grander kind of, table of nations i think the hungarians i heard this somewhere that the hungarians they they believe themselves to be the descendants of nimrod so yeah here's some practical things that you could do the best you can um get the names know the names of your ancestors and know the general history of the country that your ancestors are from and that might give know the history i'm trying to learn the history of the philippines i'm trying to learn the history of ireland i'm trying to learn the history of germany know the history of what happened there know kind of learn about the inclinations of the people group that you're from like what are the filipinos good at what do they excel at what are they not so good at learn the foods that they cook Usually the traditional styles of cooking are better than any kind of modern seed oil consumerism foods that you'll find in the average supermarket. So we got to learn how to cook ethnically. That's what I'm trying to do. I got to start creating lumpia, shopao, pancit, all that stuff. Some other things that you could learn is, you know, if there's any kind of journals or also pictures, you know, pictures of your family. And it's possible you don't know. Maybe maybe you don't know your identity, your background. And that's, you can only go so far, but you can kind of know your ethnicity to some degree. If you're just a general white person in America, narrow it down. Like, are you, are you English? Are you German? Are you Italian? Are you a combination of all these things? If you're if you're like ten different you know European countries all split together, then maybe your ident you identify more with just Europe as in general. If you are African, then try and figure out which African tribe you are ethnically closest to. If you are mixed race like myself, that's kind of something I've been trying to figure out. Is like how like what exact what exactly am i i don't fully belong to one ethnic tradition there's a lot of different components to who i am as a person but i'm definitely on my mom's side the filipino roots are are definitely a lot deeper my grandparents and my mom are direct immigrants so we have that direct influence but you can probably do a lot of digging 
like talk to your uncles, aunts, your your second cousins, and hopefully someone has recorded that kind of stuff. And ideally, what you can do is create some sort of book with your family tree as much as you can find. Maybe have the history of the countries that you're from, and then have um, maybe your own story, your own, and and pass it on, pass it to your kids, and create. Probably it's better to have a book than any kind of digital information or print out the pictures. You know, we're all taking photos and videos on our phones, but most people don't realize that the digital information in videos and pictures will degrade within a few hundred years. Like books will last far longer than this ones and zeros because of entropy. You know, the, the one, if a one flips into a zero or a zero flips into a one, information is lost. And so Vince Cerf, the guy who was one of the people who pioneered and, and engineered the internet as we know it, he basically said that digital information is probably not going to be around a couple hundred years from now. So I'd say we can't, I think we should in, invest in uh, backing up all our photos and videos as much as we can. But if an EMP comes, then a lot of that's going to get wiped out. So create a physical book with most of the, the pictures that you value create multiple copies, back up all your photos on a regular basis, have them in multiple locations, and then give a copy of the book to multiple people and then bury an extra copy in the ground or something like that. You know, sit, that's your legacy, that's your your uh, heritage. And I think having a connection to those heritage, heritage is, um, is very good. It's going to keep us strong against kind of the modernism that we are facing today and plus it's good like it's there's a lot of information a lot of things that will give you you a sense of um, belongingness and it will shape the way that you view the world because we're, we're not just islands you know in america everything is so individualistic that we are we act as if we are the masters of our own destinies but in reality we are just one chink one uh link in a chain you know and we how many of your ancestors have gone through so many different experiences to get you this far and so in in a sense we are just we've been past the baton and it's our job to pass it on to the next generations all right well those are my thoughts i can't believe that i haven't valued this perspective as much I wish I would have spent more time with my grandparents. They're still alive, so thank God for that. But I wish that I would have had this perspective from the very beginning because then I would have valued uh, and probably learned more stuff from my grandparents than I will with this limited amount of time. So hope you guys have a good Saturday, and I'll see you in the next one.